I possibly acting chair? Okay, I will. Oh, we need to vote on that, I assume. Well, yeah, first off, let me uh, convene a meeting first. <clears throat> this is a meeting of the Raleigh Conservation Commission, October 1st, 2013. This meeting of the Raleigh Conservation Commission is hereby called to order under authority of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, the Town of Raleigh's Wetlands Protection <laughs> Bylaw, and the Stormwater Management and Erosion Control Bylaw. I'll now call the roll for attendance. Dave DeMonico. Here. Bob Garner. Here. Judy Keys. President Gaps. Sam Strife. Here. Kirk Turner. Here. And Doug Watson is absent. We do have a quorum present. And now, I guess the with Chairman Watson's absence, the issue of acting chair. We need a motion to nominate an acting chair. I move the. You be the acting chair. Second. Second. David, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Okay. Um, I guess since Judy's not here and we may need her, why don't we do the minutes and any administrative matters? Well, that's always what I've got first to do anyway. So, yes, I'm right in sync with you, Mr. Acting Chair. Right off the bat. So, if I may, <coughs> may I request authorization of the payroll for me. Did we approve this already? Um, no, that's that's on okay. the docket for tonight. Um, and if in your perform performance of the duties of the chair, could you approve my offers, please? Second. First today. First. October 1 of. out the uh, minutes that were approved by my senior assistant today. So before we get to that, oh. um, so we consider that schedule of meetings for next year. And okay, I had, I had that as next, but sure, we can do that right now. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Any dates or anything in there that is a, whoop, Judy is arriving. Yes, I am. <clears throat> Judy, we're, we're looking at the meeting schedule for next year and see if anybody had any problems with any of those dates. Good boy. I have no idea. <laughs> it's distributed, the draft is distributed you know, in, a, in a previous meeting, I believe. Yeah. Right. So if you didn't have any problems then, perhaps you wouldn't have any now. <clears throat> Anybody have any concerns? Could I have a motion then to approve the meeting schedule for next year? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Next order of business is to, Brent suggested we look at the minutes that he distributed. Anybody have any suggestions for changes or edits? Please feel free to jump in. Well, I guess. 
a couple of tiny things. Uh, first thing on the second page, enforcement order 406 Staple Street. Yep. One, two. Uh, I'll count down the lines. Two, four. No, I'm sorry. Two, four, six. In the seventh line, it says discharge of sediment and tailings all in. Yeah. It'd be a bit better worded if there was a comma after tailings. That's right. Extremely nice. There is a table. There is a comma after tailings? No, it's no just a good one. me. The wall itself is in that area. Page. page three, yep. Three. Uh, something like the eighth line down, uh, it starts the line above that and says, Mr. Vera stated that he had already completed the site restoration using five gallon buckets to be oh, removed. Remove. Yeah. Not, not past tense. Yeah. Other than that, I don't have anything. <coughs> Those are so minor as to pick them up. I wish I apologize. Anybody else read them? I don't have anything. All right, do we hear a motion to approve the minutes as revised by discussion? So moved. a second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. Opposed? Yeah. None. I like your wording okay. in the minutes about Pass. being revised by discussion, but I may adopt that. Um, I didn't have anything specifically planned, but seeing as how we have five minutes before the advertised start time of the other item, I didn't know whether it would appropriate, be appropriate at this point in time to give a brief review of my appearance before the Community Preservation Committee in regards to the uh, submittal uh, to that body. I think it would, but first I'd like to suggest that in the absence of the chairperson, um, it does not seem to me to be prudent to do the performance evaluation of Mr. Brent, which is a 920 agenda item tonight, and to do that at the next meeting. Um, you had to advertise that, right? Well, I mean, I posted it as, yeah, yeah. it was posted as part of our agenda and meeting notice. So I can just... Is there a time constraint to get it accomplished? No. Okay. Well, what I was thinking was that we could, <clears throat> when we come to that, we could uh, open the discussion and just continue it. You wouldn't have to repost it. it. It's just as easy for me to just put it on the next agenda. It's, it's actually no trouble at all. Okay. Does any, everybody concur with that idea? Sure. Do we need a motion to that effect? Probably, since it's an agenda item. So may I have a motion to postpone consideration of the performance evaluation of our agent until the next meeting? So moved. Second. Second. Judy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. That would be to the October.
October 22nd meeting. Yep. I didn't want all the folks at home that was going to stay up for that. Have to stay up for that. Like, <laughs> I'll go to bed early. Um, they just change the channel now. Right? As soon as you that vote was done. Okay. Um, now, Brett, you were going to update us on your meeting with the Community Preservation Act. Yes. <clears throat> um, the commission submitted <clears throat> a proposal to the Community Preservation Committee for funding uh, through CPA, what is it called, Un unrestricted? Undesignated. Undesignated, excuse me, undesignated uh, funds <clears throat> for uh, the effort to uh, grant a conservation restriction to the Massachusetts Audubon Society who would hold it um, and as part of uh, the responsibilities in holding the CR, <clears throat> their land protection department would um, put together what's called a baseline report which provides documentation of the condition and natural features on the property, on the open space portion of the Bradstreet Farm parcel, as well as uh, some of those monies would also go to an endowment which would pay for annual monitoring performed by Massachusetts Audubon Society to check on the status and condition of the open space portion. And finally, um, if there was ever the need for defense of the conservation restriction, i.e. there was some type of violation or intrusion, uh, that in conjunction with the town of Raleigh, Massachusetts Audubon Society would also initiate actions to defend the CR on the open space. As an additional item that was estimate of $500 was added for the purpose of getting the services of a surveyor to um, put some monumentation more than likely between the interface of the open space boundary and the privately owned farm barn parcel. <clears throat> a significant portion of that boundary goes across what previously had been cultivated or at least mowed uh, fields and so there is no, there's nothing marking it, no stone walls or anything else like that and so um, I figured it would be prudent at this point in time to take steps to possibly um, put some markers there to designate where the open space boundary was in conjunction with the now privately owned uh, historic farm, barn part of the parcel. Um, the committee voted favorably, and subsequently on Friday, I worked for a brief period of time uh, with uh, Laura Hamilton to um, edit and craft a proposed warrant article to go uh, before the town uh, fall special town meeting for consideration. And I believe that the Board of Selectmen approved that being put on the warrant last night. I got to the meeting, the Board of Selectmen meeting late, and uh, they had already taken action on that, but it sounded like we were going to move, so. Well, Brent made an ex, I was, I'm on the Community Preservation Action Committee, and Brent made an excellent presentation, a very strong case, and, and uh, everyone was in agreement that it was a good idea. So that's a, a plus moving forward on that. Okay, well, I think it's appropriate to move to the first event item. <coughs> Mr. D'Amato? Yep. Would you like to come up to the front seat? <laughs> Have a seat where we can talk more easily. Um, 
reading the legal notice in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Riley Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Public hearing will be held on Tuesday, October 1st, 2013, at 7.45 p.m. at the Town Hall Annex, located at 39 Central Street, to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Vincent D'Amato, Jr. for proposed construction of a 40 by 40 crushed stone parking area with treated landscape timbers and a 10 foot by 14 foot prefabricated shed, possibly within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands at 52 Christopher, Christ, <laughs> Christopher Road. Map 8, parcel 19, lot 5 in Raleigh, Massachusetts. Uh, Mr. Acting Chairman, I will need to recuse myself from this agenda item. Mr. D'Amato is my neighbor. All right. Well, I, it's, it's really I initiated the uh, applicant's filing here. Um, obviously, I travel this neighborhood because on a regular basis I drop off meeting packets uh, just to Commissioner Garner's residence. And I noticed uh, one day that a new uh, crushed stone um, parking area with uh, Crushed tree and landscape timbers appeared along the frontage of Christopher Road on a parcel that I had some recollection of having a past filing for soil evaluation purposes. And so, therefore, I came back and consulted the files in the office to see if in fact there had been uh, work activity within an area regulated by the commission that we hadn't had a permit filing for and found a 2005 filing for soil evaluations of which um, you see that we actually have utilized part of the plan set for uh, making the submittal tonight. <clears throat> and in discussions, uh, Mr. D'Amato, was very responsive, contacted the office as soon as he received a notice of violation letter. And we worked to craft a filing uh, to present before the commission tonight. Um, it is an after the fact uh, request for permitting. Um, but basically, I uh, figured that was an appropriate uh, manner to handle the work. and gauge its proximity and whether there were any unintended consequences or or possible future detrimental impacts to either the uh, buffer zone and the portion that the bylaw stipulates as being no cut, no disturb, or the border and vegetative wetlands. And Mr. D'Amato can explain specifically the project and the work that he did out there. All right. Um, Basically, what I did was I leveled off the area by taking the dirt from up near the sidewalk and pushing it back to the retaining wall. Um, then filled it in to level the rest of it with crushed stone and then had the shit placed on top. Um, I apologize for not coming in front of the board. Prior to that, I didn't realize I needed to. I didn't realize it was a buffer zone. I mean, I know I was out of the wetlands, but. Um, I mean, that's really it. Other than that, um, I did take care of a few issues that Brent had pointed out to my wife uh, about a trench, a couple trenches for a pipe coming out to the shed. Um, they've been filled in. I put in the, uh, the check dams, I believe they were called. Yeah, so check yeah dams. three check dams. And that's really it. So, carrying on in, a, in regards to um, my visiting the site to review uh, the work and, and associated activities with this, 
uh, distributed um, some photographs to the commission because there's a number of barriers on the property where some grading and surface disturbance of the soil as well as piling of branches and stone and other debris in the area of the shed and I tried to there's some orange circles on the sketch plan the smaller circle represents where I think that's where part of the initial trenching for the electric conduit right by the shit. Yeah, yeah, seemed to seem to follow what was a natural low point right off of the sidewalk and the side. So when I visited the site there was a bunch of loose stones there as well as some disturbed soil that still really hadn't filled in the trench for the conduit and I kind of speculated that that would be a natural point for stormwater to concentrate and to erode that disturbed soil. And it also seemed to me that the, all the loose stones there presented an immediate solution after it being properly regraded was to make a couple of stone check dams there. I think I initially thought that maybe just two would be sufficient. It was a rather short distance. It was only like five or six feet, I think. Yeah, right and that was normal to find yeah. And so, therefore, I figured that, you know, since there were these, all these loose stones um, cast aside on the top there, I figured they could be configured into a couple of check dams to slow down the water and, uh, therefore, decrease the velocity and not have it scour and dig out a gully there. <clears throat> on the back side of the uh, crushed stone parking area, and there's also a small, I believe it's a prefrap shed that's been installed there. The larger orange area, the circle that extends down to um, flag A5, actually represents where it looked like material, the surface of the soil had been scraped and pushed down right to the edge of the wetlands with a pile of branches and brush. It's halfway in the uh, the shade there with the uh, the photograph that has the two the clipboards both on top and bottom photograph and it's kind of dappled in the sunlight because it's underneath the uh, oak story. That's material that I would recommend the commission require that it be pulled back out of the wetlands. It's actually gotten into the edge of where the bordering vegetated wetlands is in the swale uh, that conducts some of the roadway drainage. Yeah, it's it's all been removed. Okay, well, and, and yeah, yeah. kind of fix the. And rocks. then yeah, the regrade it back out, and then either mulch it or something, and, or or get some leaf litter or whatever, and, and get it seeded to try and and get some vegetation possibly to grow. Although it have to be shade tolerant, um, because it is kind of uh, shaded there under the pines. So those were the two areas that I noted that appeared they may have been disturbed during the construction of the shed. The <coughs> electrical conduit that services the area goes off then overland on the top surface of the ground. It isn't actually um, dug into the subsurface at all, into the wetlands. Um, and I guess there's either one or two light poles or something, spot, spotlights or floodlights planned further down towards um, the rear of the actual residence. This is a separate lot. Um, it does have a separate address, even though there's a structure there. Um, there wasn't a structure there anyway until, until the uh, shed and the parking area went there. Um, I think when you get to the other property, as I tried to indicate by the orange arrow at the bottom of this, uh, the photocopy plan section there, there's a larger area that one of the photographs tries to capture. Yes, it's one right in front of Dave. Where there's almost a five to six foot wide pathway where it looks like wood chips and other things have been uh, placed. That extends approximately 30 to 40 feet out into the bordering vegetated wetlands. I'm halfway positive that almost all of it is in bordering vegetated wetlands. And there's piles of branches, debris, some timbers, and other things to the side of that. Um, 
So I'm presenting that tonight to the commission, and I have, I didn't have time to actually go into detail on a memo due to other activities, unanticipated activities that caused me to have to go out <laughs> with the Raleigh Police Department today. But I have have put together some suggested conditions that the Commission may wish to take this time to review um, to just kind of oversee and direct um, if the Commission so chooses. Um, this is more than likely um, an unintended situation of alterations to um, forested wetlands. And it looks like most of the material could be relatively easily removed. And there probably wouldn't need to be an extensive effort put in restoring the area, just getting the smothering material off of um, the wetlands where it's presently been deposited and then just dealing with it in an appropriate manner, either sending the wood and the branches off to some place that you know chips and takes landscaping debris or um, depending upon whether the dimension lumber or beams down there are actually pressure treated, they maybe should go to proper disposal for construction uh, debris. But um, the commission could view this as approximately um, 300 to 400 feet of unpermitted filling of bordering vegetated wetlands. Uh, but um, I suggested incorporation into possible conditions for the issuance of the RDA, thinking that maybe the Commission might wish to take uh, this constructive approach with Mr. D'Amato and, and possibly just seek to have uh, the removal um, accomplished and then inspected by myself as well as I would meet with Mr. D'Amato out there to talk about what areas are actually of concern since it's hard for the person on the street to actually identify some of our wetland resource areas here in town. And, uh, that, that therefore, you know, if you felt, if the commissioners felt this was a, a uh, constructive approach that would get restoration of the area that may be setting a deadline for it to be accomplished by the end of November, that, again, in discussions with Mr. D'Amato, find that that's doable or whatever. Uh, this was a suggestion as an approach to handle it. The other option is to issue an enforcement order and basically stipulate that uh, these actions be completed and set a deadline for it and, and do it in that situation. Um, either way, um, it would extend to Mr. D'Amato uh, some sort of written guidance to allow him to get perform an activity in regulated wetland resource areas and restore it and uh, return to compliance. You've seen this list of conditions that he's talking about? Uh, this is the first I've got this. I, yeah, this, this was just done today. Um, and you had a chance to look at it. Anyway, you've heard Brent's explanation. Yep. Of, um, are you comfortable the, with those? The, the wood chips only go in about 10 feet. The rest of it's grass clippings. A lot of the pile of brush and timbers were all in the woods, you know, when I, when I bought the place. Um, I've tried cleaning some of it up. That's where the wood chips came from. Um, again, I mean, I, I noticed where the water is, you know, during the wet season, during the dry season. Um, I tried to stay away from it. Um, I mean, I can remove the grass clippings and pile it higher in a one spot. How 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 thick is it? It's anywhere from four to six inches, maybe maybe more. I mean, I'd have to actually excavate parts. So of this it can be put back with a rake. Yes. Shovel, rake, wheelbarrow. Yeah. Grass clippings plus the. Uh, yeah. I mean, the timbers. I I can. The woody stuff. I can get rid of the. Tim, is I think some of them are railroad ties, some is pressure treated. Um, I can dispose that. of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, you bought that, right? No, well, that's well, yeah. it. Yeah. I did. Um, it, well, it might be appropriate to tell you that in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the property owner becomes responsible for compliance with environmental regulations. 
Okay. It, it, in all honesty, doesn't matter how it got there, but if it's there and there wasn't a permit appropriately issued for it to be there, then if it's altering, filling, dredging, or removing the wetland resource area, then it is not in compliance with the regulations of both the state and the town. The other misconception is that the wetlands protection law actually names a selection of plant species. It doesn't actually identify whether one sees water at all. It names specific plant species that are known to be, um, the best description is loving of saturated soils or capable of having their root systems inundated for portions of the year. Okay. And so that community of plants is what the law actually protects. And so therefore, putting even yard clippings down that smother the natural plants that grow there is actually an alteration and, and, okay. and not looked at favorably by the, uh, by the regulations. And so just to give you some context as to you know, what our perspective is, and, and this, this suggested strategy of working with you um, to allow this material to be removed was not crafted to um, assign any blame or not. It was crafted to be a pragmatic approach to working with you to try and get these issues addressed um, you know, again, without making any type of judgment as to who's necessarily at fault, but just that there's a situation. Well, that's, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to please blame. Well, no, no, no. I, no. I, I, well, I just tell you, we aren't <coughs> either, at least right. I um, didn't offer this to the I community. mean, my thing is, is with all the erosion control and stabilizing, I mean, really it just needs to be rigged back, put in a pile, and... We always put that to be conservative so that if a situation develops, we can stipulate that erosion okay. control methods be used. Um, you're, you're correct that I more than likely don't feel there's a need to do anything like that at this point in time, that okay. just appropriate mulching um, is more than likely the only strategy uh, to, to use on yeah, the property. It's but, pretty flat. But, yeah, yeah. but most of this is actually directed at removal of fill. Yep, understood. Um, of, of whatever material it is, which is why I tried to be rather non-specific and just say unnatural materials. <clears throat> well, the tree branch is unnatural, and most of them fell in the woods. Well, they didn't all fall in piles, though. <laughs> they True. probably fell in the scattered distribution, which, again, if it was a scattered distribution, it wouldn't be an issue, but because they're piled, they're smothering whatever. Because I think the plants have pretty much grown around the pile at this level twigs because they've been there for however long. I mean, for me to rip that pile of sticks out, I'd probably cause more damage well, to that's, the plants. Well, that's why I believe I specifically made a suggestion here that I meet with you out on the site to decide about okay. this stuff so that we could make decisions like that. Okay. <clears throat> so if you're comfortable with all of this, um, you know, I think we can proceed along those, ideas, along those lines without having to well, that's, I mean, it, it depends on the extent of what he wants me to remove. I mean, really, I'm just trying to get the shed in the parking area approved so I don't have to move that. And then I'll, you know, I'll work on the other issues. I just, I don't know what size of a list he'll have for me to move. And I don't want that to hold up, you know, my, a, a different proxy, basically. No, but it sounds to me like um, Mr. D'Amato doesn't necessarily interpret all the material, all the man-made and, and unnatural material that's piled in the bordering vegetated wetlands is necessarily being in need of being addressed. Well, you were gonna, you, you're going to discuss that in the meeting, right? Yeah, but I think we need. I think we need to. I think we need to go forth with an understanding right now that that either there needs to be a site walk with some commissioners coming out there, or you need to accept the fact that the 
wood chips, grass clippings, dimension lumber, and, and consolidated piles of branches are not necessarily natural features of bordering vegetated wetlands and that therefore they need to be addressed. And it, it could end up being a, a fair pile of material. I you know, don't have any way of assessing it other than to tell you right now that it's about five to six feet wide and seems to extend 30 to 40 feet um, into, the, into what appears to me to all be forested wetlands. So quite possibly, if you know, if you wish to segregate and issue a determination of applicability for the shed and the little bit of um, regrading work that needs to uh, take place on par parcel 52, Christopher Road, but then my suggestion to the commission would be to consider the issuance of an enforcement order for 46 Christopher Road. Uh, setting a deadline for removal of materials that, you know, whatever the commission wishes to work out tonight. And so, 40 feet in, obviously you're getting wetter, you're getting into wetland more. Um, right, but it was, you know, again, if you look at this sheet, bordering vegetated wetlands was pretty much delineated by the flag. When this was originally done, to See. basically be at the at the edge of the cleared lawn area, and where the remaining trees and and canopy was left, that's basically all saturated soils. And it's a forested it's a forested weapon. So where is that on this? Do you see that? Is this? That area that you just described, from where the no, that's actually by the shed. That's the uh, that's where all the loose stones for the check yep. dams. That's the small orange circle. So this is considered upland, uh, so to speak. Well, it's it's in the buffer zone. Yeah, it's the part of the buffer zone that normally would be no cut, no disturbance. Yeah. The and that's on that's 52 true. Christopher Road. Now the next photo that you're looking at is the area that appears to be more closely behind the residence at 46, so I think it's on 46. Yes. Christopher Road. That's down here? That's, yeah, down there off that particular plane sheet. <clears throat> and again, as you can see by the dappled sunlight, it's all understory. Yeah. It's all beneath the existing canopy of the remaining trees and stuff. Is there a an area on these two properties is outside the resource area where he could move the stuff in. Remove the stuff in. I don't have the kind of money to pay a company to start trucking everything out of there. Yeah. Well, but there are areas towards the back of the property, you know, that basically would be the uh, edge of the 25 foot buffer. Well, that's right at the street frontage. I don't really think he okay. wants to pile the material right up. I'm sure the neighbors would like that. 40 feet, there's, 40 feet back? There's an area on the slope that I guess previously had some kind of gardening activity or whatever on it that's very sparsely vegetated at this point in time. It's probably somewhere like 20 feet, um, the 20 foot line of the buffer zone. So, so is this planter, what is this? That planter's not there exist. anymore. It was uh, got some four by fours and a rectangle with. Old plants overgrown. I take sounds like a good compost over. pile. What's well, right in the middle of the yard? Well, all right. So there might be a problem there. <laughs> well, let let me. Um, I just want the kids playing there's around. There's an area down here that's sparsely vegetated at this point in time with some exposed boulders or whatever. That that would be an area that he, that material could probably be put that wouldn't necessarily be aesthetically displeasing to the street frontage, but would get it substantially out of the bordering vegetated wetland, which may be what the commission solely wants to achieve at this point. Let me see if I can clarify my thoughts on this. <laughs> I get the sense from what's been said here that, that you would be willing to go out to the site with Mr. <coughs> um, D'Amato and, and point out the areas and things that need to be removed and stockpiled in this area 
and then subject and perhaps some stabilization done. And if all that was done to your satisfaction as our agent, uh, then we probably could avoid a determination of applicability filing by the, with regard to the shed, and we probably could avoid an enforcement order, which would require well, you to do those things anyway. No, we already well, have yeah. an RDA filing for the shed okay, sorry. and the parking area. We've already got that. All right. But, it's the enforcement but I'm suggesting a strategy a to avoid an enforcement order for the filling and the piling of debris in bordering vegetated wetlands. I'm just trying to anticipate because Mr. D'Amato is being very frank and honest, and he's mentioning that he has some concerns about the material that's out there. Um, unfortunately, I have to represent the commission and seek for compliance with the regulations that basically say that any fill that isn't permitted that's been put in bordering vegetated wetlands needs to be removed and in this case it seems that the removal process even though it might uh, result in a fair amount of material being moved out of the wetlands it's also capable of being done by hand without mechanized equipment so that it won't cause any further um, harm and, ju and just that there's probably a, a fair amount of it because there's a fair amount of grass clippings and chips and I, as I recall, you indicated that this be accomplished by the end of November, subject to review. Well, I was suggest I was suggesting that so that we aren't in adverse weather conditions, and right, which we may be anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, right. well, are you, you comfortable doing weather. those things on an informal basis with Brent? And, and well, I'm suggesting that it formally be codified by the issuance of the RDA, incorporating that. Yeah. Right. As opposed to going on enforcement order. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, it's going to be the least costly and yep. more um, workable solution to this. Um, we're trying to give you the opportunity to avoid an enforcement order. No, I, I understand. I just, you know, it's... Sounds like wheelbarrow or garden cart could help remove some of this, and if you've got some strong relatives and... <laughs> <laughs> no, friends that can help I mean, you with I'll that. I'll do it myself. I'm more than happy to, to work. Um, as long as I can find a, a location on the property that's not out in the middle of the yard, you know, where the kids can't play with it, and it's not, you know, up in the street. Because I know on the, the picture that I had received with the highlighter, the buffer zone for 52 Christopher is pretty much the center of the road. Um, it doesn't leave any yard on 52 Christopher to place anything. Unless I can go in, I mean, sounds like I can't even place the stuff in the buffer zone. No, that wasn't, no. No? We were trying to get it somewhere like 20 to 25 feet. Away from? Off of the edge of the, wet, of the wetlands. Okay. But it definitely would be in the buffer zone. And Obviously, you know, you're a lot there where your house is. That a lot of that was cleared and, and converted to lawn, and that was that was allowed. There's, you know, not a problem with development activities in the buffer zone. They're just subject to regulation, and the commission usually attempts to achieve some sort of um, discrete distance, which is why the bylaw uh, specifically mentions um, 25 to 50 feet, but that's in an undeveloped, that's talking about, you know, a new proposal for development and clearing of the woods, say. Okay. Where you already have cleared lawn area, the idea here is to remove the, the f what we look at as fill, what our regulations say is fill, and at least get it some distance, and I suggested the 20 to 25 feet, because that's just what the commission normally works with. Okay. But if we can't find a spot, it happens to be 10 to 15 feet from the wetlands? Well, you know the area I'm talking to of your property where there's kind of some stones there and it's lacking of grass and stuff? If 
on the wood pile. Lower portion of the slope down below where that planter used to be, down yes. the gradient of the planter. That's a that's what I'm okay, suggesting. Location. Okay. Well that's why I want to come out with you so okay. that we can Well that's something I mean that's that's a good area I can do as long as you know that seems to be the right area. I just you know, you come out and change everything and then all of a sudden I'm in over my head with removing and relocating. Again. <laughs> Again. Well, that's why I just I want to before I okay to you know the you know all this has to be done to accept the shed and the parking area. I just want to make sure that I okay it now, and then a week when when I meet with you and all of a sudden it turns into a lot bigger than it sounds. I don't want to be stuck doing that just to get my parking area okay. You know, it's it's. So just before you move, just before you start taking the material out, just you and Brent power out and okay. you can pick out the spot and he can tell you where it is. And but the underlying core thought here, though, is that there is fill in the wetlands that wasn't permitted. Yeah, and, I understand. And that. as much as Mr. D'Amato doesn't like to hear that, well, it's just well, I'm just saying the commission and I and, get it, it, but it's and our support is that most of the town throws in the woods mostly because the trash pickup it doesn't, doesn't help you to throw other innocent um, property owners well, under not, the bus for doing the same thing i mean not to sound like a, a jerk but this was found when you went to the property when really you shouldn't have been so i'm just i don't want to i would <laughs> definitely take issue with that statement uh, we set an appointment. Your wife was there. Is she not? On 52, Christopher. Right. So it's just and I for asked you to her, find and I asked her grass clippings in my woods and not my neighbors who you didn't go in the yard and find. So I don't mind moving them. I just don't want to spend weeks moving piles and piles of, of brush and rocks. Well, I could see those alterations from 52 Christopher Road, and I could have sworn out an affidavit. Okay. Right then and there, and issued an enforcement order, and I didn't. Okay. You're here well, before the commission. It. So, having what we hoped was a constructive yes, conversation I, about um, pragmatically removing the fill out of the wetlands. And okay. I don't believe I acted in any type of illegal or no. unauthorized behavior, and I believe oh, and I all the evidence I presented to the commission was gathered in a legal and forthright manner. Okay. <clears throat> well, I apologize. So if we can set a meeting maybe this week, next week, and you can lay out where you think, what you think I should move and where I can move it to, so I can get this settled. Now, do I get to wait till the next meeting to go over this again and then set a inspection how does that work no i well i defer to the commission but i'm suggesting that the commission uh vote to issue tonight and just make the decision as to whether all these suggested requirements including the the field visit to uh to uh, basically lay out the extent of the, uh, of the removal and the, its transport to a storage area or a piling area, however you wish. And if the commission directs me to, to do that tonight and votes on it, this would be the only meeting that would need to be done. And then Everything any follow-up inspection visits, you need to just contact me. Yeah. To you just deal so with once that. you inspect it and you okay it, you come and... Well, well, then once you do you the work, do you would then, then call, call me so I could come out and verify that the material has been removed and then stockpiled and transported to an appropriate area. Okay. And we, you know, we're trying to accomplish one-stop shopping here tonight. Oh, I think we're getting there. <laughs> well, like, would you suggest a motion for us to consider Brent along the lines that you just talked about? We can incorporate these. Uh, that would be uh, the issuance of a negative determination option number three with incorporation of the suggested uh, conditions as set forth in the memo of October 1st uh, with the understanding that removal activities would also occur on uh, 46 Christopher Road. My memo doesn't seem to have that. No, it doesn't. You just asked me to suggest it. I know. Well, it sounded like we had it before. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, do I hear a motion so to that move. effect? Do I hear a second? A second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? None. Okay. Any more questions? What did we decide? I didn't understand what he was saying. We're issue, the we're going to issue a permit which will include the suggested kit conditions, which also cover the removal of the material at 46 Christopher Road with us meeting on site. If um, you want to set up a tentative appointment time or whatever, I can do that at this point in time, either Wednesday afternoon or or Thursday afternoon, if you want to meet early in the morning, uh, then we can also do that too. Um, I can be in town at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, I think that would be better for me because I'm usually going by 5. Okay. So either day, late, later afternoon. Okay. So Wednesday when? Uh, 4 o'clock. Okay. Is that tomorrow? Yep. Wednesday. That's tomorrow. So we're approving the issuance of the determination of applicability with the conditions noted, um, Mr. D'Amato, and subject to Brent's approval of the work that you've done to his satisfaction. So if it's not done to his satisfaction, then we'll wind up back here again. So, and I assume we both would prefer to avoid that. Yes, yes, I would. Thank you. All right. Um, and is it still end of November? Is that uh, that date hasn't set yet until? To clean up. Yeah. It sounds like that you would like to appreciate that time frame. Right? Well, that's uh, sooner I mean, sooner the better. Sooner the better. But to get gives you six, yeah. six, six days. Like I said, I don't want the chance of me having to move all that rock and shed. Yeah, if you can get it done faster than that, get, have at it. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to have to do it after a freak sun's Okay. Oh, that would be Thank nice you. Well, this permits and allows the construction of that parking area with the small modifications that you've already mostly done. Okay. Just on check dams and stuff, so that. So this permit's going to cover everything, though? That covers all of it. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Is it all you guys need just to measure? Or? Who's measuring the distance? Just show I think so. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that's part of the filing. That's the legal ad. Oh, you want it back? No. Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Riley Wetlands Protection Bylaw, as amended. The public hearing will be held on Tuesday, October 1st, 2013, at 8 a.m. at the Town Hall Annex, located at 39 Central Street, to consider a request to determine applicability application filed by E.J. Seaboyer for proposed construction of a replacement sewerage disposal system and abandonment of an existing system, possibly within the 100-foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands at 256 Main Street, Map 24, Parcel something, Lot 81, in Rowley, Mass. Says parcel parcel slash, slash lot. lot. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what it says. Seaboy? I am Bill Dufresne with Merrimack Engineering Services. Okay. What is that mean? Mr. Seaboya, who's the previous owner and seller of 256 Main Street. Um, our office prepared the septic system upgrade plan. I think maybe I should be using some. Why? You're not in a butter, are you? 
I have reduced variables. It's helpful to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our office has prepared a septic system replacement design for this site. The um, current system consists of a septic tank and a seepage pit located in the rear of the property. Uh, the seepage pit being approximately 20 feet from the nearest point of the wetland. Um, the design we have in front of you proposes to redo plumbing in the basement of the house and bring the sewer pipe out the front of the dwelling to get the septic system in the front yard so that the nearest point of the leach field is um, 96 feet from the wetland. Uh, nearest point of the work is about 85 feet and that would be the construction of the sewer pipe from the house to the new septic tank. Um, so, um, you know, our intent was obvious to get everything out of the rear yard. Uh, which is a very low-lying area. Um, there's a small terraced area immediately behind the house, then the topography drops up about four feet to a very flat, low-lying area adjacent to the wetlands. Um, so our intention here was to get the septic system in the front yard. Um, again, a small portion of it is within the 100-foot the buffer zone, but it's, uh, as you can see from the size of the site, the small, the small nature of the site, that uh, we've maximized the horizontal extent we could get the septic system from the wetland. Unfortunately, the water table worked in our favor such that um, it's not much of a mounted system, it's a foot or less. Um, otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have been able to get it out front due to grading issues and other things. So um, I think it's a design that's probably the best we're going to get on this property uh, and, and provides a far greater level of environmental protection that exists here today. They're on the west side of Route 1 A. Is that correct? The west side, yep. Yeah. There isn't a specific memo, but the commission does have some suggested conditions. Be before I just review verbally for the commission what normally I would have covered in a memo if I wasn't uh, chasing after salt marsh grass wrestlers today. Um, as part of the investigation uh, for this property, uh, originally the commission had received um, an RDA for soil evaluations, uh, which led to <clears throat> a delineation of boring vegetated wetlands at the rear of the property where developed lawn is. Um, apparently, at the time, the information filed with the commission did not show the existence of a manhole in the uh, rear yard just below where possibly the historic filling had occurred to develop this lot, which uh, connected to a drain that uh, di diagonally transected the rear yard and then outletted um, within the bordering vegetated wetlands um, to the uh, north east, I guess? Um, yeah, 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 northeast. northeast. Yeah. <clears throat> As, so once that was found and they canceled um, that as an area to do, perform the soil evaluations, uh, then the focus was turned to the front of the property and as Mr. Uh, Dufresne has said, um, probably a much more environmentally sensitive design in terms of uh, the concerns the commission normally has. But also, uh, when he and I met on the site, we explored the fact that if there's a drain here, it had to be receiving water from somewhere. And it may be part of Mass Highway's drainage system. There is an inlet on the other side of Route 1 Main Street, um, kind of in front a portion, I don't know whether the property is still considered part of Todd Farm or whether it's just the separation of the various um, brothers, I think. Um, but it appears to possibly take water underneath Main Street and then it may outlet uh, right at the side of the property where there's sort of a gully and then somehow make its way down and connect in with where that manhole is. It's, it's Rather there's some kind of inlet down there, um, we're not sure, but the point of the, my just bringing that up is that there's no sign that any of that 
um, has bordering vegetative wetlands, that in fact it's more than likely uh, just in response to stormwater possibly coming off of Main Street. And the placement of erosion control and the location of this system in the front is all appropriate for how the topography and everything is configured in the front. And so what I've presented to the commission as uh, possible uh, conditions for uh, negative determination, uh, option number three, is pretty much standard in boilerplate, uh, but because this work is uh, within the outer portion of the buffer zone, um, they, and they have shown erosion control appropriately on either side of where the work site is, um, there doesn't seem to be any other need for any additional erosion controls. The only other thing I wish to discuss with the commission, and it might not necessarily be appropriate to talk with Mr. Dufresne, it may be something the commission wishes to direct to the new owner, is the fact that when the wetlands were delineated in the rear yard, it was pretty much found that the mowing activity was actually extending and going into what was delineated as bordering vegetated wetlands. That more than likely happens on a seasonal basis when it dries out enough to get mowed, it gets mowed. When it isn't dry enough to mow, it probably, um, you know, mm. don't as enthusiastically take their mower down in there. Um, it's more or less a reflection of the fact that I think most of the lots um, adjacent to each other, three or four of them on that side of Main Street, were all developed by apparently the placement of historic fill in order to bring them up and that normally there probably was an extensive freshwater wetlands. There is towards the rear of the property, especially at the house to the east of it, which the commission um, a couple of years ago had a replacement system filing on also. <coughs> Other than that, uh, it's fairly standard and it's a, you know, a good proposal. We've seen a list of conditions that he's mentioned. I have. Are you comfortable with those? I am. And you expect your honor would be? Um, I do. Commissioners have any thoughts? <coughs> Additional? I just have the statement that <coughs> it looks like um, the designer's gone out of his way to place this system in a very tight area. And it looks like you had to have a few um, variances granted. Quite a few. Yeah. yeah. Well, local setbacks. upgrades and variances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as far as our jurisdiction is concerned, it looks like you, you place this system as far away as possible uh, from the resource area. So I think that was uh, something that we were glad to see. And the Board of Health approved, I assume. Yes. Any members of the audience have any questions or concerns? I assume we're looking for negative determination option number three with the suggested conditions. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Um, the one thing Thank you, you. Men mentioned, um, you want to know our feelings about approaching the owner with regard to the mowing seasonal mowing. Um, I don't have any problems with that. I feel very strongly about it. It's not, it's not very extensive, so I mean, it's... Are you talking about down in here? Or? Yes. This, this is long. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, actually, at the, at the so the it's is actually is long. Lawn. Yes. Okay. That drain pipe is, is under what currently is being maintained as lawn for quote unquote a, a rear yard. There's a shed located right down here. This is probably 30 to 40 feet of lawn wetlands interface. Mm -hmm. And on the adjacent areas, yeah, it's all well. freshwater wetlands with. Right, it is, cattails and is this mm -hmm. is the one right here, the one that we approved before? Yes, a while ago, yes. So we stopped them. Well, in his situation, as soon as it drops right down, it's 
it's what? Clear wetlands. Yeah. So there never was any establishment of lawn down there because it just would have been inundated, seasonally okay. inundated and just. My view is there sure, certainly should be some buffer zone, but I'm not sure I'd agree that the whole thing has to be. Oh no! Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I just didn't know whether we wanted to ask the new owner if he could um, not mow the edge of the wetlands. Yeah. Perhaps that's something you could strike up a conversation with him about and suggest yeah. some sort of monument monumentation so that. Well, it might, again, it might not even have to be as, as official as that, and you can really kind of tell. <laughs> consistently. Pardon me? We've consistently asked for at least five or ten feet. Right. Yeah. I think in this situation, you know, if you ask for ask them to respect five feet or whatever, I don't think it would Again, I don't think it would entail any hardship, but you know, the owner isn't, the applicant isn't even the owner, and Mr. Dufresne isn't re specifically representing yeah, the, 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 the new property owner, so it's more an appropriate conversation for the, for the new property owner than it is for Mr. Seymour. Didn't catch the fact that it was Yeah, that's right. I'm actually working for the previous owner. Although the Colonel has been extremely cooperative in every way. As was the previous. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Chairman, I believe the next agenda item for informal discussion, so I don't have any type of legal ad or anything else like that. We just, just want to read the agenda. Agenda item for H15 is informal discussion with regard to 316 Havel Street Institution for savings proposed parking expansion. Good evening. Charlie, are you here for that? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, I have with me tonight, I have um, Kim Rock and uh, Mike Jones from uh, How do you do? From the Institution of Savings. Oh, so we just pulled these I'm chairs sorry, Kim up. Rock? Yeah, Kim Rock. And Mike Jones. And um, I have a little presentation here, but I was hoping that they're just on the half by eleven sheets. And I was hoping we could just pull these chairs up and have that discussion if that's sure. As long as the chairs are here when you get done, you can do whatever you want to do with the chairs. <laughs> In fact, they donated the chairs, so they have every right to whatever they want with the chairs. The, um, and we appreciate it. We appreciate that greatly. Yes. Now, I, I don't remember who was, um, who was on the commission back. It was 2006, I think. And that's what I thought. Two, three. Okay, so so everybody I think has a memory of it. Um, it is uh, the site was was a difficult site. It was a, the old clam shack was in there, and uh, and um, it's riverfront area. So um, when we first proposed the project, um, in our wildest dreams, we didn't think that we would get the business that we've gotten. And uh, the bank would actually like to even expand the area on, on top of the drive through We'd love to expand the offices into there. But what we found is is that the parking that we, and we were in front of the planning board, in front of this commission, were very much um, saying, we, this is the parking. We, we don't think we'll ever need more parking than this. And, um, so we're kind of here a little bit with our hat in our hands and saying we, we were wrong. We, we, we need more parking on the site. And um, because it was a riverfront area project, it's, it's a little bit difficult. And I'm going to try to construct an argument for you as to, as to why, you know, why I think we should be able to do it. But I think this commission has to agree with me. It, it's, it just can't be my opinion. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this out first. This is 
actually the, I'll describe what it is. Um, this is the existing bank. These, these spaces along here are the existing spaces. And there's ex existing spaces in Owen here as well, although there's only one handicapped space in, in this location. And then there's spaces along here. Then along this, this is the, this is the existing edge of the pavement. And beyond that is, is a biofilter swell, which, which runs all the way in here, which in 2006 was a pretty exotic, uh, was a pretty exotic structure. But um, the, um, the current um, stormwater management regulations has really codified that. And um, so there, it's actually a rather common thing to use now. Um, at the time, when it, this, this is what we would like to do. Now let me, what I'm doing is I'm gonna back things up to 2006. Um, in 2006, and I know it's, this probably feels like I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, in 2006, this is the old McIntyre's. It actually used to encroach right upon the, <laughs> upon the highway layout. And, uh, what better place to have a drive? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. And, um, in the area that you see in black is, is the area that was within the 200 foot riverfront, the, the batch L, the brook runs along this side. So that there's a hundred, 200 foot and 100 foot. And that is the area that was uh, degraded. It was mostly pavement. Um, there was some gravel. And then there was also, I think it was a dwelling that was actually here. And there was a shed and a garage. And, and then there was, there was, it was a mixture of gravel and paved surfaces. But the yellow is what was degraded within the 100 foot zone. And the black is what was degraded within the, within the buffer. On this plan, this is what we built. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. This is in the 200. Within, you mean, within the, you mean the 100 to 200, don't you? River front area, not right. the one. Not, not 100 foot buffer. Right. I meant the 100 foot, the inner 100 foot right. riparian area. Right. Yes, yeah. they right. refer to it. Right. So but we, you then pointed to the dark green and you said buffer. Okay. And I think you meant. I meant the inner you one. You meant 100, 100 to 200 river foot river front area. Yeah. yeah. It's zero okay. to 100. Right. No. The no. river, the river, one hundred to two hundred. The one hundred to two hundred. Yes, that's, 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 okay, that's is that dark green? I see black. I must be colorblind. <laughs> um, anyway, so great. that's we're not going to have you paint anything down yeah. there. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> when what we proposed, this next sketch is what we proposed, and, and this central to this is the bank, and within this. I don't know, is that dark green or is that black? That's dark green. Is it? Um, it's black to me too, John. It looks black. It's <laughs> well, good. It depends on the way. It's this dark, this like dark, dark color here yeah, is... Uh, the artistic folks are over on this corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the area that was going... It, it was degraded or paved surface after the construction. And in some of the numbers, the, the area previously degraded prior to, to the project um, between the 100 to 200 foot zone was 17,990. The, within that zone, the area that was degraded afterwards was 13,233. I'm not sure how we ended up with three, 33 of that. And then within the, the 100 foot zone, it was just short of 5,000 square feet. It was McIntyre's, which was 4,985. And that was reduced to zero. Um, we also, at that time, there's an area in here which is, is actually fenced off to keep the beavers from, from eating the, the, uh, the mitigation area. Yes. But this is, actually a, <laughs> this is actually a riverfront mitigation area that was constructed. And there's a lot of vegetation in here. It was very, I think it was well executed. Um, where, what I'd like to do is suggest that we would like to turn the clock back. 2006. I know that's probably oversimplifying the case. Um, had we asked for this additional parking in 2006, I think we probably could have made a good case that we would have gotten it. Um, the reason is, is if the additional parking that I'm showing here is, um, if I was, it would have, I still would have been between the 100 and the 200, I would have had 15,000 square feet of um, de degradation, degradation versus 13,233, which is still would have been a reduction. And then instead of being zero of an impact, there's a little bit of an impact to the interior, it's about 800 square feet. So the overall 
reduction would have been uh, just just short of twenty three thousand down to just short of sixteen thousand. Now, I realize it's not two thousand six. It's now it's two thousand thirteen. Um, but I wanted to at least get in front of this commission and and open up a dialogue about how the bank can get some more parking on this site. Um, this work would encroach upon the biofilter swale, um, but what we would propose is to is to is to make the swale a little smaller, um, turn it into just a water quality swale, and pull around to an infiltration basin, which would be in this area to make up to the for the difference. Um, and it would this would give us, uh, I believe it's fi 14 or 15 additional spaces. We might be losing one here because we need to have when we get to that higher number, we have to have uh, one additional ADA space, but. Um, that's kind of my, I've, I have looked at trying to get some additional what? parking up in this corner, and I've been willing to, to take a look at some studies I've done on that, but it's it's not very fruitful, and I, but you know, in terms of trying to get more parking in there, they're just isn't yeah, What's really the tough. lot line there? Um, on, on this area? Going up that way, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can let me roll this plan up for you. be a good park number of people up there when the parking cars was there. And that was before we put a generator up there. Just going to say, where's the generator? Well, I remember, is it yeah. that's up there? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. The generator, this is the... So don't throw that idea out there, Carlos. Yeah. Well, let me just walk through, because they want to... The generator is actually here, and we're roughly in that. Yeah. The problem is, as you go up into that area, number one is there's... I looked at it, and it's, you could... You can draw like nine parking spaces there, but you lose four of these getting there, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work because you wipe out the you, you wipe out the BMP, and there really isn't an opportunity to do any BMPs in that area now because you're riding right along the, the edge of the no disturb zone. So it doesn't. Again, I could I've got a, actually a sketch of it, but it do, it doesn't work. Um, I be another one I did was to come in this way and wrap around. And then you'd have a little bit of a uh, stormwater in, in, in this location, but you wipe out seven spaces and you gain eight spaces. So you do all that work to gain more yeah. space. And I'm not even sure it really works with the, you know, the train is difficult. It does climb. This is where the septic system is and it climbs up here. This so is the reserve area. That's the reserve area. That's correct. Well, is there so any? Go over that? I, I know you love your generator or whatever. Um, we just saw our proposal before us tonight in a very compact system. Is there any way to study for approval of some kind of innovative system that would not necessitate the use of all that reserve space so that you could go out here and have yeah. parking spaces well, there this, this, be this because you're cool. rearranging some of that reserve area, well, which might necessitate the movement of the generator. But let's Where's forget that because you keep cringing every time I mention. Yeah, it. The, the terrain for <laughs> one, and then just the, the site view from the people coming by. I mean, where where we have it proposed is in the back of the building. I mean, you, you'd be driving by, seeing cars parked up on what used to be beautiful landscape grass. Um, <coughs> But the, you need oh, to yeah. understand that our yeah. concern is well, the wetlands and not the land, but not the people's view. So yeah. let's. Well, well, this is where the discussion. Uh, okay. Let me. There is there is no alternative system that allows you to because that's when when people talk about alternative systems. In fact, alternative systems are not really well. They're not they're not prohibited, but alternative systems do do not give you any relief. From Title V, unless it's a repair, this is not a repair. This was right. was right. built under new construction. There isn't any <coughs> alternative systems which allow you to waive the area of the of the um, you know of the reserve area because because this grade is down at 61, and the, we've got groundwater. We'd actually to build those spaces. We'd have to be removing the very soil that we need to justify. Right, but you can't. System. So the reserve area can't be moved over to here. Or no, something? because the, the reserve. This is a hundred foot buffer zone right here. Okay. And all right. No, I'm just no, no, no. I'm that's just, that, that's you know that I, we, we, these are all excellent questions, and I want to. We're not allowed to put the reserve area within the buffer zone. 
monadolite. In fact, this, we're not allowed to put the, the, the septic system within the uh, river front area. And so this area right here um, is the area on the side. That's not the mill, that's not the mill river, so no. Well, that does, that does not, according, according to what I've recently been told by the health well. department, that restriction only applies to the riverfront of well. the mill river where our drinking water supply yeah. is coming from now. Granted, this is in a zone two, so maybe that's different because this is the well, zone two for I stand the drinking water well across the road. Uh, that's fine. Well, it's, so, not, so it's not practical to put the septic system okay. anyway down in this area. If the so commission I mean, would allow me, can I can I ask another qualifying question? Sure. Before you get to that, I mean that shoulder brook, which is the brook we're talking about here, yeah. drains a large marshy area, which is a potential site of a future well or an, or an old one, it seems to me. Yeah. Um, so. Well, that's all the zone too. Yeah, well, yeah, so it's all the contributing aquifer yeah. for, so, yeah. for the well. well okay, okay. So how much of your nice riverfront restoration area are you proposing to destroy here now that we finally got it? Zero. Zero? We're proposing. You just taking the area that's got the swell. Yeah, we, w we would be encroaching upon the swell. Yeah. Um, I've got this. This is actually the riverfront area, and this is the fence. The area that we would be proposing, we'd be, we would take and expand the base, and we certainly would squeeze up as tight as we could to this. We might even have to temporarily remove the fence to do some degrading. But in the end, we would, we would put that fence back up, and we wouldn't lose any of this. So we're not talking so about you're not that imp so, so if we treat all the restored area, treat it as if it's naturalized resource area. You're not proposing any new disturbance in a, in a naturalized area. If we treat all the restoration area as being oh, naturalized maybe just area. just a temporary grading along that very, very perimeter edge. All the parking would be over within, within this area where we have that existing swale and in this area. So that's I was trying to stay away from previously disturbed because yeah. that takes into account the riverfront restoration yeah. area was previously disturbed. Right. So no, no, no. And that's I'm so trying for you folks not to undo your good deeds here because I actually yeah. tried to encourage you putting up some type of sign or something stating about what a successful environmental yeah. restoration. But the in, the intention is it does not. Anyway. We would be doing <clears throat> some regrading in this area. And like I said, it might sneak just up to that fence. We may even have to temporarily take the fence down. But we would put, once it was done, it was created, we'd put the fence back up. And if any, if it, there was any, but the, the intention is to maintain what we created before. It's not to touch that. I realize. So all the disturbance would be in an area that's already been delineated as the area that was built on. And right, yes. So it, that's where he's kind of coming from. Yeah, and that is and that is what we're talking yeah. about is is encroaching upon the biofilter swale yeah. and there's a grass strip. Right. But you're not filling anything is right. the point. Okay. Right. Um, now your in, one question about your infiltration, new infiltration area, you're, yep. you're you're confident about the groundwater separation is adequate? We've we've made we've um yes. We've made um we had soil tests. There was one here, I thought there was another one over in this area. Um, we, we made calculations and based upon the soil testing we did previously, we feel pretty confident about it. But yeah. it's a good point. Yeah. What is this due Are to stormwater management? And that's an excellent question. The, the stormwater management complies now. Um, there's been a change. In 2006, there was a change in the stormwater management. What we did, we did is we took a look at um, what would happen to the stormwater management currently. And with, it, with it, the additional um, pavement we have here, and this um, moving the, it's really taking the biofilter swale and kind of making it into an infiltration base and more in this area, we would be in full compliance with um, the stormwater management regs, which we have to be anyways. I mean, there's no, um, but we would, we would meet the requirements for treatment, infiltration, and for um, no increase in the rate of runoff. 
How about riverfront disturbance? Are we running into any regulatory problems here with the percentage of riverfront disturbance, or well, do we pass on that because you're going to consider this that's, still redevelopment? Of, that's that's kind of that's why that's sense. why you were that's harping on degraded area, yeah, weren't you? You're trying to trying to keep us in Mr. Peabody's wayback machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Eighteen. Well, you know what? I think it's. I'd have to go back and look. At, I. It, it depends on how I look at it. We we also have on our property over here. There's more riverfront on this side. Mm -hmm. So if you start to take that total and what is it, ten percent? Right. Um, so I may be. Yeah, I think to, we did. I think we did that before, and it was like this wasn't even. Yeah. If bumping it anywhere. Yeah. So. If this area <clears> here <throat> is not included in that calculation, and I include just the new parking spaces, I'm, I'm pretty confident we would be below that 10%, but I'm not sure about that. Um, my, my argument is more one of, we're in this, the PD's way back machine, and we're, you know, we're reducing overall, but, um, but that could help buttress my argument. But, but, I haven't done that but are you making yet. existing conditions better? And that's... To the maximum extent yeah. practical. Right. Only if I'm in Mr. PBD's way back. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, my... But, you, but you're basically saying they're no better, but they're also no worse. Right. 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 So, I think we're, we're being as transparent as we possibly can on this. And wanted to... And we, we certainly are open to suggestions and, and invite, you know, the, the commission's uh, uh, ideas onto the table sometimes. Well, let me mention a couple of thoughts that come to mind. Poo-poo them as you will. No, that's um, fine. Have you considered moving the drive-through area from there to in front of the bank and making this your main entrance, which yeah. it all practical effects is anyway? Yeah. The, um, uh, no, we haven't. The, the, the zoning requirement requires that the building be 50 feet away. We're not, we're not allowed to put a, a structure in that area. And the drive-through counts as a structure. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You. Yeah, we're not, we're not zoning. Yeah, so yeah, you can tell us anything. You know, <laughs> it really wouldn't work anyways. That's gonna be a major problem. We'd have to. Yeah, we'd have to. We'd have to gut the. The other piece, we'd have to gut the back and start over because it's. Yeah. You know, it's if you were to put, even if we could do it, like I said, the interior, the way the the interior of the bank is set up, we'd have to start with a totally new floor plan. A couple of so, so helicopters. Should so for, for, for both degrees. those reasons, for zoning reasons and, and for just the practicality of um, of that. Have you considered purchasing a piece of this property yes. and, yes. and moving your veterans mobile? Yes, your other field, like your employee field, put your employee yeah. parking. We, up there we have, and we we um, we had, and I helped um, I helped that negotiation, but that is not. They're not willing to. Sell us a, a piece of the property. Um, we spoke with Nick, Nick Di Natale and we spoke with um, Marjorie Noonan of uh, of yeah, I would say that's the the so that's, that's the very yeah. um, one. Of, this is neither here nor there. One of the things that annoys me about this pathway here, I don't know if it's a formal road or what it is that goes to McDonald's and Stephens Garage before then, is that it's one way this way, and I often see vehicles coming out here. I don't know if there's any way to. It's not us. No, I know. It's a. Um, it's it's a, a, what's interesting. I did it once myself. But <laughs> you know what? What sort of interesting? What do you complain? Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be able to do it. I've been, I've been involved. I've been involved this project for very long. I've probably done it. I didn't know any better because I don't think there's any signage. The only yes. sign is out here. Right. And oh. what's worth noting about yeah. that is I don't know if it depends on the the one way on this was a condition of the access to McDonald's. To McDonald's. Yeah. This access was here for a long time. It was been used by Veterans oh. Mobile for years and years and years. And, and so I think technically that if you're at Veterans Mobile and you drive out here, you're not breaking any rules. And the only rule that exists is that there's a condition that says that McDonald's will not use as an exit. There is a, there is a sign at the McDonald's that says, do not enter. And there's a sign here that says exit in. So, well, they do. I mean, I, I so that's the driveway. Give you the drive point through out about veterans, but I've been going forward. in there. I've seen people wheel around the back of McDonald's and come up that way. Yeah. The um, I mean, 
I don't personally, as an engineer, I don't have a big problem with cars leaving here. What I have a problem with is cars leaving here and taking a left hand turn. <laughs> because a right hand turn out here is not a big deal. So I think I think there should be two way access here and there should just be a sign that right, says no right turn. Right. Yeah. That's that's what I think is really a more sensible solution than trying to prevent cars because the left hand turn there it's well it's it's brutal. It's brutal. Mm. But that's a little bit of a side note. How many yeah. parking spaces do you have now? We have 18. And we'd like to add, I think, 15, 14 or 15. Um, what's the nature of the business increase? My impression has been that this is primarily a loan office. And, and um, it strikes me as that that's not a, you know, I know that it's also access for <coughs> your average retail customer, but... It's a very large retail office. Yeah, it's a hundred and ninety five million dollars in yes. yeah. What's that probably four or five times what you thought it would be? Yeah. Which uh, is a good thing. It's a bad thing that comes yeah. with it. Um, anyway. Yeah. 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 We're we're woefully on the park right now. We could use yeah. five how many spaces do you think you could use now without even the addition? It's all probably easy, eight to ten. Yeah. So what's happening now with the parking? Is, are people parking on the street or something? Or is it getting to that kind of serious that people just can't get in and they just... No, they just kind of squeeze along We're doing edge. a lot of the perimeter the parking. Right? But, yeah, so all the employees now actually park here and mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And we've restricted this to just obviously the customers. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's become problematic is that the customers are pulling in mm -hmm. and not finding any place to park. And they're right. coming over here. And you know they're kind of like double parking where the employees are parked. It's just they're parking along the curb lines. Yeah, like yeah. exactly. Right. Have you taken this to the planning board? Not yet. This, I thought, the most critical path on this was was this commission. If you were going to allow us to do this work in the riverfront area, right? Go to the planning board. Yeah, the, I don't think the planning board would be a difficult argument the planning board would say, gee, you need more parking, put it in, is it all right for the Kong Kong? Yeah, yeah. So. that's exactly mm -hmm. right. The only alternative area I see is in front of the building, and that's not going to... You could put parking there, right? No, you're not allowed to park within the 50-foot zone in front. That's really? A, yeah, that's, it's prohibited in the zoning. So short of buying property, that's it. Uh, we wouldn't be here otherwise. We okay. we kind of we looked at a lot of options and this seemed this was not the first option. This is like option number five. You know, we looked at trying to park here. We looked at parking next door. Um, mm. We've we've even considered you know parking across the street, but it's it's way too dangerous. But we we talked about it and right. dismissed it very quickly. Got a substantial uh, reduction in depositors. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was going to suggest that, and then I said, no, that doesn't work. But but I do think the building that the bookstore is in, the lady downstairs or whoever owns the building, it's not a successful business. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was saleable. It's an awful, awful no, place. No, we don't want employees walking across the street. Then you're going to have to have a big overhead bridge. Yeah, yeah right. right. Have to, a viaduct. Yeah. The permits so. you'd have to pull for that. For you can't go down here because that's all well. I suppose you haven't considered a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> a two-level. A two oh, <laughs> for eight cars per floor. Well, at least you said that first. I was on the suggestion, you know, when they had the big dig or whatever, they had those little yeah, ones you drive yeah. into and it would elevate the car up. up, up, up. up. Yeah. <coughs> well, you folks want to see an application? I mean, proof of the pudding would be rather it actually will play out when <coughs> compared against the regulations. Right. So how far away, Charlie, are you from developing some plans to, for the next step? I, if you folks, if we get positive feedback from you folks tonight, 
I think the bank's <laughs> probably going to turn me loose in the hallway. So, um, I, you know, I'm open to seeing an application, but I'd like, I'd like you to have an informal discussion with the planning board first. To get Certainly, to, you know, what, you know, their restrictions and rules and regulations with regard to parking go. Sure. I mean, you mentioned that you've taken into account an additional handicap space. But right. That's actually an ADA requirement. It's a, mm -hmm. a state and federal requirement. Um, but the, um, but it's a good, I mean, we, the planning board did waive the requirement was actually, I believe, was five spaces. If by code we should have had 30 spaces on here, but we went to the planning board and said, "Listen, we this is what we need. We don't need more than this." And the planning board actually granted a waiver of the parking requirements to re to reduce the parking down to three per thousand instead of the, I believe it was five per thousand. So, but the planning board is very much in tune with listening to an applicant and saying, gee, this is what we think we need. And they oftentimes allow us to, and, we, and on this one, we readily admit this is, you know, we kind of dropped the ball on this. This is, we got it wrong. And we're, he we're here trying to, trying to fix something that we got wrong. Is this a stone walkway? Like, it's, what, um, what is it, this? yeah, it's a, it's brick. It's brick. It's brick. It's brick. If you snug that up, is there any way of, you snugged it up on the back, it could get... Take, take that out or allow you know, the end on the back. All that's going to do is just make it larger. Yeah, you're going to get more spaces yeah. out of that. The spaces will still have to be 20 feet long, so... Yeah. Yeah. You could pull it in that way and that would pull some of that away from there, but where are you going to go with right. that? So what do you have in between spaces there? I mean, just um, for the travel room for feet, is that like oh, 12, this, 12 this is it, It's actually 16. 16? I'm just yeah. curious, okay. Yeah. yeah. Which is, is that the minimum, or? Um, you could do less than that, but I think the, the fire chief was a little leery. Theoretically, you can narrow that down to like 12 feet. Right. And I think, the, I think the fire department's a little worried about right. getting, getting it. Getting a problem making that there. turn. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a little bit wider than if it was just passenger vehicles, you can narrow that down. But How do the other commissioners feel about seeing a more formal proposal? Yeah, I think that's yeah, I think it's a good idea. Not what you need <laughs> <laughs> a sense that we consider. It. The question is how you do the do the reworking because other than that, I think we agree. No, that's my job is to yep. you know is to is to provide the backup and show that, you know we we'd have to return to the to the planning board um, who would have Larry Graham review anything we did and he would confirm or not confirm that um, you know that we were still meeting the, the stormwater management regulations. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if we can't do that. And this discussion is for not, and I need to do that. Good. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks for your time. Hey, thanks Thank for your you. time. Thank I haven't considered selling it to another bank and um, moving, no. moving somewhere else. <laughs> well, they're not going to get that back. I don't think nope. you'd want that either. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, right. Have Thank a good you. evening. Thank you. I can fully testify to the board that they didn't expect what they got out of that building. I'm surprised. I don't Very see well. that much traffic coming in. I know. I go by there a lot. I know what you're saying. Well, it doesn't have it to be a large, store. It just has to be yeah. large volume of money. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's misleading. I mean, yeah. You could, yeah. Have, you could have two or three customers with huge deposits in there, and that balloons that figure up. So exactly. So it makes it look impressive. But right. Particularly if they're commercial. But I was saying they're seeing a lot of retail traffic that they didn't expect.
was a good discussion and an interesting one. Well, we're well past our 8.35. Yes, we are. are we yep, and nobody else has come to talk to us about that, so that must mean we want to trigger their request for a continuance. Is something since we're talking about Have a parcel seen anything? request that we couldn't deal with it anyway. You've got a memorandum on this, right? Um, no, no, oh, the partial certificate of compliance. Yes, I did manage to get a memo on that. And you're recommending that we consider the issuance of the partial certificate. As yes. Yeah, this particular lot, not only does it not have any wetland resource areas or jurisdictional areas even under our bylaw associated with it, but it also doesn't have any of the stormwater management system for the, for the subdivision as a whole. And so therefore, it would be my recommendation to consider the issuance of the partial certificate of compliance for 33 Wilson Pond Lane. So this is just a stormwater management issue? No, no, this is an old expired order of conditions for Wilson Pond Lane that contrary to what should have happened, the town, because of litigation, I believe, the town either took it or allowed its acceptance without the applicant getting a certificate of compliance for the construction. And so now, Anytime any of these homeowners have a halfway decent title search done, mm -hmm. I get a request for a partial certificate of compliance because the subdivision as a whole never received a certificate of compliance. Nor, if you ever ask me professionally whether they should, will I ever recommend that they that they should, since the stormwater basin at the cul-de-sac of Wilson Pond Lane is, is inundated by water flowing in from. Beavers. Wilson Pond. <laughs> no, from Wilson Pond. Because yeah. <laughs> well, basically the bottom of the basin was <laughs> estimated high groundwater. So, <coughs> so, so we there are no issues. discussions about that. Nope. No, no issues chance. with this particular lot. Okay. okay. Well, I see no reason why not to issue yeah. the partial certificate. Would you like to make a motion? I'll make the motion. So we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Done. Stand Brent that the next two items with regard to the artistic landscapes they request a continuance. Well, seeing as how they didn't show up to present anything that they've been working on in response to my memos and subsequent the issuance of Larry Graham's first review for the, through the planning board process, I would say that they have defaulted to the, the email that asked me to request the continuance. Commission continue to the next meeting. Both items, 835 and 835? Yes. Yes. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Dave. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave? Yeah. And, yeah. and this is for both of them, right? Yes. Yeah. Whoops. <coughs> These for 111? Sure. Okay, yes. in the meantime, you don't need them back right now, do you? No. Okay, yeah. I'm no, they may be working on revising them in response. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I Did, well, didn't I, I forward Mr. Graham's memo to you? I don't know. I 
I'll redo that. Yeah. <clears throat> is that the planning board's request, Larry Graham, is also gauging their compliance with stormwater regulations? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, in regards to the notice of intent for land off of Daniels Road, tentatively issued DEP file number, I think it's 63 625, a letter from the applicant's representative requesting a continuation. We are working on the stormwater pollution protection plan that is required by the EPA and the long-term pollution protection plan that is required by the DEP and need more time to complete them. Please continue the public hearing for the Marion Way project, DEP file number 63-625, to your October 22nd meeting, virtually yours, John DeCoulos. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Continue. Just to let you know, now this also has caused us to grind to a halt in regards to hiring yeah. um, Horsley and Whitten to do the peer review because we lack stormwater operations and maintenance plan which we were told a number of times we were going to get within the course of a week or so. Now we're not, and, and now he's listing the stormwater pollution prevention plan, which I'll note is not a requirement of the notice of intent, but of course they can under the stormwater regulations, the, just to let you know, under the stormwater regulations for the Wetlands Protection Act, they can say that they're going to do that and be in compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act stormwater regulations. Now, they, because it's a 40B project and they request numerous waivers from the Zoning Board of Appeals, they have also um, said that they have requested a waiver from the stormwater and erosion control bylaw, even though most of the compliance with that is dovetailed through the WPA and the EPA, but anyway. Out of curiosity, why did they you felt better saying asking that they would wanted a waiver? <clears throat> Out of curiosity, why did you only allow five to five minutes for that agenda topic? If they'd come in, it seems to me it would have taken a lot longer. Well, than because that. he wasn't going to come in. Oh, okay. Because he's consistently told me a certain date, I'm going to have the operations and maintenance plan, and, and it hasn't shut up. Fool me once. So you give us shame on you. Fool, fool me twice. Shame on me. <laughs> have a sure motion to continue the <laughs> proceedings, and that was it. Yep. Sure, it's not. Uh, you just won't do that again. <laughs> okay. To, to quote that famous stick my hand on the red burner. I learned it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Continued request for Certificate of Compliance 63-611 to 870 Haverhill Street, Map 4, Parcel 3, Lot 1 through 5, Woodside Condominiums. And you have a memo. Yes, I do. <coughs> and your recommendation is that we consider voting to grant a complete certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions based on a satisfactory report from a field inspection to verify the sign installation contingent upon a 14-day window for completion otherwise for completion otherwise the decision expires yes because um, if I may I received a communication uh, email on September 23rd uh, from James Conley who is uh, represents Port Property Services, that is the land management firm for Woodside Condominiums and has been overseeing and handling uh, the work. And all that is left to do is a permanent installation of a sign that says public drinking water supply, rock salt prohibited. Uh, they tried 
doing a couple of light duty garden fence posts and corrugated plastic yard sign and I had to rule that that was not a permanent nor durable sign. Not to mention it was only installed 24 inches off the ground so it immediately <laughs> would have been covered by snow during the winter anyway. <laughs> let alone not, st not <laughs> stood up to plot. <laughs> um, so anyway, so he tells me, um, so Mr. Conley says, I am traveling from September 24th through October 2nd which is why you can't be here. The sign is due in while I'm away and will be installed upon my return. It was ordered from Sir Speedy. I hope this is satisfactory and I will contact you the day it is installed. Because I told him I needed to verify it and inspect it. So I figured with that only one item outstanding that it should be a relatively simple affair and therefore instead of just carrying this on the commission's agenda, uh, I mean, if, if they don't follow through and don't get it installed and it isn't to the proper specs, then we'll obviously we'll be back, but I thought the commission might wish to make a decision tonight contingent on the verification of the field inspection. And I just always recommend that we just you know put a time limit on it so these things just don't hang and hang forever. 14 days running from what? Point from on? today's date, so two weeks from tonight which since he is returning tomorrow, that should give him at least 10 business days to get it properly installed. Any further discussion or questions by the commissioners? No, right here. All right, do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Done. I had hoped to have some paperwork prepared for you prior to the meeting tonight, but I apologize. The um, situation developed, which needed my immediate attention. Um, commissioners, I can't remember. You may have seen an email. Uh, there, there was an incident at Ipswich Bay Glass um, mm. with a major failure of their erosion control and, and site management, construction site management practices, which basically, if I was a, had a little bit more time today, I'd be presenting an enforcement order to you. I am going to ask for your signature on a blank enforcement order because I believe it is appropriate to issue an enforcement order. But what I've handed to you is the restoration plan, which was almost immediately developed by DeRosa Environmental at the instigation of uh, Mr. Patrickan. And they moved speedily within uh, 24 hours to actually remove, uh, upon discovery, the uh, gravel fill that had been eroded and washed into the bordering vegetated wetlands, approximately 300 
square feet of bordering vegetated wetlands was impacted and another approximately 400 square feet of no cut, no disturb uh, buffer zone, uh, wooded buffer zone on the slope. This, <clears throat> I think I need to recuse myself on this. I don't believe you need to want an enforcement item, um, to I'll be honest with you. Call that. It's not, it's not like we're issuing an application, we're, we're not considering an application here, but I mean, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. But just to let you know, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's twice in one night. Yeah. Case what, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. Um, in case anyone didn't now. catch it, I, I've done business with Bill DeFresne. Yeah, but you're not oh. currently in a financial arrangement. No, with no, not at all. Yeah, that was around. a very minor thing. So. Well, um, yeah. But anyway, I'm suggesting that if I'd been more on top of things, I would have already issued this enforcement order and I would have been coming to you seeking confirmation. Uh, it definitely was uh, a violation. It um, was relatively extensive. It wasn't uh, de minimis. Um, but they have moved very speedily uh, to resolve the situation. And all I would be recommending to the commission is that we require monitoring, which I think may already be um, stipulated in here. The gravel, the gravel fill oh, had such a yeah. the gravel fill had such a temporary <laughs> repository in the in the resource area that I'm not sure it really had a chance to uh, to impact things, and I definitely expect the root systems and everything else will just spring back, and they are being much more attentive to the erosion control in this particular area of the site, which in fact the new proposal actually was addressing and had a swale extending over into this area to pick up runoff coming from the gravel area, but it inadvertently got concentrated and then not only their parking of uh, trailers, but the way they put Jersey barriers up concealed and kept anyone from walking near this area and they didn't realize they were starting to get gullying and erosion on the top of the slope. They had erosion control at the bottom of the slope, but also because they weren't coming over and looking at the slope at all, they didn't notice that the sediment had already built up and was rendering the erosion control ineffective. And we had one of those uh, quick downpours that we had a couple of weekends prior to this and it just washed everything and overwhelmed it. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the this enforcement is order is to get it done. Yes, to allow them to go in and do things. Procedure. Exactly. Right. And also because their existing house. permit didn't have any type of restoration <laughs> or anything in it because they weren't. Um, impacting any BDW, yeah. and so therefore it wasn't like I could, t could take existing conditions of the permit and say, okay, do that over here now on it. I would recommend that you appoint an alternative temporary chair before you move on this. Couldn't convince you to get back up here. Huh? <laughs> So do we, are we almost do that. to the point mm -hmm. of a motion on the table? Is that what we're... Yeah. For, yeah. To so the we point do, of we need getting somebody, a motion on the table, but someone has to ask for it. We need somebody it. to direct the, direct the proceedings. <laughs> It'll only be for a few minutes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be me? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Would you consider yeah. serving as, as temporary chair? And be sure. Good, be good for the resume. Then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't wrong. Then if your fellow commissioners will I'm offer I'm a motion I'm and a I'm second. We appoint so Dave yeah. temporary chair. Second. second. Jury second. Okay. All in no. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Yes. Three to one. I listen to this. I don't. Three to one. 
<coughs> so we should. Okay, so we have a motion, Mr. Acting Temporary Chair. If I could, I'd recommend um, confirmation of issued enforcement order <coughs> for 420 Newbury Port Turnpike and 340 Weathersfield Street. Actually, I think it's mostly all on 420 Newbury Port Turnpike uh, for. <coughs> Failure to appropriately maintain erosion control and deposition of gra gravel fill with remediation and restoration to immediately be com commenced per Mr. Ardrosa's environmental restoration plan. As Brent indicated, do I have a motion? So moved. <coughs> Second? Second. Okay. Done. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Done. Okay. I have a question from the, from the floor here. Hmm. With regard to another matter. You didn't ask for discussion. <laughs> Pertaining to the same property. As you, I guess this question is directed to Brent. <coughs> oh, excuse me. As you travel down one route one south after you go by Weatherfield Street, and you're coming up on this piece of property, um, you come to the to, to a driveway. It's the second driveway they built into the. Into oh, the into the yeah the yeah. And just to the north of that, they have scoured out a a truck back in area. Um, that's not paved over, but it looks like it's been cleared and and, and maybe graveled a little bit. I don't know. It's just. Is it adjacent to the new building they're working on there? It's right. It's adjacent to that driveway. Swings in. It comes and goes. Or, Comes comes in back towards Route One. I don't know whether that's a wetland area or not, um, but you may want to take a look at it. I want to go look at it. You know. I mean, I had I, that seems like that's the, nothing because I could see the like buildings when I came yeah, yeah. today. And they, that's the area the where the uh, where well. I got that kind of funny email mm -hmm. comment mm -hmm. coming about whether I had enough to do. Yeah, being maintained. What's this? What's this back here? What does this something to do with this? The facility? Is it like a treatment system or something? Yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, the area around the This is the old driveway, the, main, the first driveway. Yeah, exactly. right. The and second one's, one's here, here, and the area yeah. I'm talking about is up in here. Okay. But I'm wondering, one, I mean, just out yeah, of curiosity, what, what is this? What there were there there two there. houses back in there, homes. The yeah. ones that go up on the hill? Yeah. And so one of them, and, and he bought out. This one, I think. There's another uh, one back in here somewhere. Right. Maybe that's the remaining one. I don't know. Yeah, there was a family that had yeah. sort of a two homes. Combine. Okay, that's it. So somebody lives there. Yes. Huh? There is a still. Yeah, yes. this would have been a lot. I don't know if it's that one or what. <coughs> 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 I thought they were waiting to cut one. No, no, I know. The okay, Route One goes along here. Route One. Yeah. Um, and this side uh, curves up to it. Right. It's. Well, it, That's what it, I tell it, you to talk about. Right in yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. noticed uh, it's, it's hard to see because it's that there are trees on three sides of it, but right. the leaves mm -hmm. have gotten sparse, and it looks like it's big enough to back a trail truck in there. Oh, okay. okay. So that doesn't access Route 1. It's just no. on this part. No. It's no. back in or front yeah. of I've never seen a vehicle in there. But right. I think <clears> it even <throat> has a wire, um, like, yeah. gate. Hmm. Between two posts or something. I, I know I've stopped in there. Yeah. 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 Curious. It's not clear. Mm -hmm. so it's temporary work for the area. So do we got to go back to the. Yeah. Do you, the chair? you relinquish your. I. <laughs> first, second temporary chair <laughs> to the first temporary chair? <laughs> I do. All right. So we have additional status reports of concerns? Or? Yeah, give me a second here. <clears throat> yeah, today I was called by Raleigh Police Dispatch to say they had received a telephone complaint and dispatched an officer 
to Main Street close to the Raleigh Newberry line where it was reported that someone was digging and taking plants from the salt marsh, digging in the salt marsh and taking plants from the salt marsh. And so, when I got out there, <coughs> I met, so I was asked to meet the officer who you can see his lower uh, torso or legs in that picture. And there's a rake in that picture, I believe, yep. on the ground. There, he, obse he observed uh, Dan McHugh, uh, who insisted that he was on his property that he hadn't sold to Massachusetts Audubon Society, and that he was allowed to remove wetland plants, salt marsh plants. And the officer, not knowing any better or whatever, you know, had dispatch contact me. And by the time I got out there, Mr. McHugh had left the vicinity, but you could see where he had been taking um, tall form Spartina out of the mosquito control ditches. Um, and I returned to the office and pulled up the assessor's information. <clears throat> and what Dan McHugh had told the officer was that he had retained ownership of a wedge-shaped piece of property, a wedge-shaped piece of salt marsh at that location. Well, there is a wedge shape from the assessor's map, but that wasn't where he was. And it turns out the wedge shape is listed as belonging to the Pico Farm Trust, which I understand may have been recently sold because now there's a sign about tender crop um, in front of what had been Pico Farm. So being, being that as it may, when I returned with this in a tape measure, the square rectangular uh, piece of property there, which wasn't subject to discussion, happens to be 100 feet by 100 feet square. And so the officer and I taped off 100 feet from Main Street and ascertained that there was no way we could have been on the Pikels, what had been labeled as the Pikels property. But we ended up on what is currently labeled by the assessors as Mass Audubon's property. Which is the circle. Which is the circle. That's my approximate guess as to where this removal operation was occurring. <coughs> So he thinks he owns okay. this. No, he doesn't. He doesn't own that at all. No. The officer believes, his, the officer's statement to me was, well, he lied to me on that. <laughs> but he claimed to have. He claimed to own some property there, and there's nothing in the assessor's records that says that he does. Um, and in fact, I believe where he was removing vegetation is currently listed as being owned by Massachusetts Audubon Society. They visited the site today and said the it's same thing. They said, yep, we could see someone was taking plants off of our property. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> no. um, well, in, in, this, in this particular, <laughs> yeah. you know, nor normally out in the salt marsh, I would say, oh, gee, maybe I've got to have it surveyed or something like this. But in this particular it's situation, delineated. because there's what, that 100 square foot lot right there, it's very easy to tell. I've got a 100 foot tape. We could very easily tell when we were 100 foot away from the roadway um, embankment and therefore had to be on another property because as you can see, that property boundary does slant and go towards in the uh, probably the Newburyport Rowley town line where it intersects Main Street. What's the 100 foot by 100 foot? It's that dark square. I yeah, understand that. Oh, that's well, owned by uh, the woman. Has that got a building on it? It's got a wood stockade fence yeah, okay. with an old junk yep. dump truck gotcha. and some other junk in there. Obviously, the it's got some salt marsh, as you can see in the yeah. area yeah. here. Yeah. I don't know even why it's shaded green, because it certainly isn't anything that's been under agricultural activity. It looks like it's more or less a, a junkyard for some old vehicles and stuff. 
Maybe there was even a building behind there. I, I don't know. Who dropped the dime on him? Yeah, I wanted to ask. That. I believe whoever is residing in what you folks used to call is it the lemon tree or lemon mm -hmm. drop or lemon whatever? tree. Lemon, lemon tree. tree. Well, yeah. and something it's before that. Of a roadhouse. Yeah. Yes. Before my time. No, it wasn't. Oh. I think it's still in existence. So the question is how you just, you just haven't lived here long enough, oh, Dan. Oh, yes. no, no, no. Not currently, don't get excited. I'm like, geez, that's that's the last yeah. building, it's the last building on the left before you hit the Newbury Town line. Mm -hmm. yeah. heading out so I called Ron Stalin at DEP, because uh, yeah. he's in enforcement and he's also who I consult with, and it also turned out that the officer knew him and had also called him an alert and alerted him. And I was told that, well, first off, there's an issue if he's engaged in this activity and he doesn't own the property, he needs to have permission. And that's the same thing the officer said, that he'd have to have permission to be there, number one. Number two, I was told that it is possible that Dan McHugh used to have permission and engage in what is an agricultural uh, described as an agricultural activity of seeding in the salt marsh dishes and, and harvesting uh, the plants for use in his restoration efforts, but I was told by Ron Stelling that he needs to have come to the commission and told the commission and worked out if there was any, you know, concerns one way or the other about how this is done and when he's doing it and stuff like that, because obviously he's tramping all through regulated wetland resource areas. and for it to be a bona fide agricultural activity, he needs to be engaged in agriculture, be able to demonstrate that he's selling it or that he at least has the intent to sell and try to make a profit um, in his activities. Um, and so far, we're off with two strikes. It doesn't appear that Mass Audubon did not get permission for anyone to be harvesting salt marsh plants from their sanctuary property, what they consider, I believe, their sanctuary property. And number two, we've not had any type of conversations with Mr. McHugh um, since, you know, the brief little interface with him down at, uh, is it Knowles? The, the riding place at the intersection of uh, Cross Street and Main Street, I think their last name was Noise or Noise or whatever. Um, I don't remember that. Which didn't have anything to do with salt marsh restoration, but that is what Dan McHugh used to do. I think it's mine. It's Noble. Arkins. Noble. Noble. Yeah. I'm sorry. I knew it was in. It's Arkins, but the. Okay. Yeah. It's known as. daughter's name is Noble. Noble. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking, trying to. Yeah. Job work it. Well, was that was that since he did restoration work for us with regard to the no. Taylor Bridge on Wethersfield Street? No, we did not approve him for that because we found out yeah. he was um, we did in violation it. and out of compliance. No, we did not allow I him to be hired. But he did some of it, I know, because I went by there when he and his crew were in there. Well, hmm. I mean, I can I witnessed it myself. Might have been a subcontract. Somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else hired him then. Yeah. <coughs> Still got his foot. So anyway, I obviously I witnessed that there'd been some activity disturbance out there, and and actually the uh, the rake when, when I returned with the officer, the rake and stuff that I had photographed, and some of those plants had been taken off site, but I didn't see anybody do it. But the officer saw. <laughs> the officer saw them putting the plants in the buckets and, and mm. taking them off-site. And, and the folks at Audubon told me they stopped at the front of where Mr. McHugh is currently residing and took photographs of the buckets of plants they could see in his driveway. <coughs> so, how does the commission wish me to proceed? Do you wish me to issue an enforcement order to Mr. McHugh? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, yeah. I not jokingly good. told the officer, I said, what, we got salt marsh rushlers? We really did. <laughs> We're rustling salt marsh plants. Spartina by stealth. Sounds like a sound. Purloin Spartina <laughs> Altanaflora. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it seems you have a pretty strong case for reinforcement. So, is Mass Audubon pursuing a trespassing? Um, I don't know. I, mean, I got an email from them just before the meeting here asking mm -hmm. me if I'd gotten the officer's report. <coughs> I offered to forward it along because I had requested. Sounds like I requested that. Um, oh, well, if it was their or, property, wouldn't they have to ask us to issue? They would have to ask us to issue an order, right? I don't know why we can't do it on our own. Well, again, yeah, you would um, actually now see if if this is in fact an agricultural activity. You, normally, the commission would for what we commonly refer to as farming, the commission would normally probably ask for something like a farm plan or something, or we'd, um, the official way to do it, do it is to have an applicant file a request to determine applicability and describe what their activity is, mm -hmm. and then the commission would issue a determination, and if they found it to be covered under the agricultural exemption, they would make a statement that it, that the activity is covered by this certain exemption and cite the portion of the regulations that it's in. That's the that's the technical dot your I, cross your T way of handling it. Normally, in the past, um, let's say with uh, when Farmer Herrick, Sam Herrick, had did that work to cross the Mill River or whatever, we had him come in and appear informally before the commission and, and describe his activity with um, his contractor, who at the time was Dana Warren. They described what they were doing and that it was so he could gain access to the fields on the other side of the river. And the commission made a determination that, yes, that was, he was not filling, because there is no filling of uh, bordering land subject to flooding, even for agricultural activities, they don't get an exemption on that. He made a, a finding that they weren't actually filling the floodplain on that and that it was connected to an agricultural activity. That was sort of an unofficial way of doing it because um, at first we thought it was might be a violation. <clears throat> um, so moving beyond the issues of trespass or whatever here, um, the problem is, is that there, the commission has not had any type of submittal from the applicant detailing that, number one, they have permission to be there, and that, number two, that, that somehow this is production, that this is agricultural production. Um, well, I, I don't think we can even assume it is, who we're told that it is. Yeah. Well, right. So, basi right. basically... Because it's kind of hard for us to know it. whether that was seeded or whether that is just... Yeah. Because if you look out across, well, and here again, I was just mentioning to the officer that you know I'm always impressed by the fact that you just look across the salt marsh and you can see such distinct where the plant species change, the different mm. spartinas change. You can see you can see these borders and you get a sense as to okay that's soft and mushy or maybe that's where a ditch used to be or whatever and, and because that's how you could see all the mosquito control ditches were all this columnar very spiky. Uh, Spartina growing along the edges of would, would define where the old mosquito control ditches were. So I think, if I had to guess, because I've never seen anybody or had anyone tell me about someone out there seeding it, I have a feeling that it naturally colonizes those areas and it's the type of Spartina that probably can deal with having contact with water more often where the low matted kind seems to want to have the periods where it's dried out and exposed mm -hmm. and at low tide. It's not covered by any water. It's relatively dry, <coughs> firm footing. And we do know from past history that he has made a business out of, <coughs> out of restoration of, of salt marshes up and down the Atlantic coast, uh, at least by his own testimony. Yeah, and the commission has cited him in the past for when he would actually go out on the salt marsh at Great Meadows, Patmos, Stafford Road area, and actually cut swaths and roll it up like turf and take it without a permit. <laughs> I found that when I was helping.
helping Mass Island try to clear up mm -hmm. the past infractions that were related to the property at Patmos Road. It certainly sounds like a cease and desist order. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean by an enforcement order? Well, yeah, as well as signing him with an enforcement order, because until until he demonstrates to the commission that there's some that either he qualifies for an exemption or he has received some kind of permit for this. The only folks that I'm aware of that can do anything in those mosquito control ditches without coming to us first is the Northeast Mosquito Control folks. And they notify us anyway as their practices, even though they have and are qualified for an exemption as long as they do things under certain Army Corps of Engineers standards. So we'd, if we go forward with this, we'd issue an enforcement order, cease and desist, and to file an application for a determination of the quality? Yeah, that would probably be the, uh, the most technically correct way to get an request him to proceed. Yeah. But what he's already done. Right. Well, he may be doing but because he doesn't have well. landowner, <laughs> because he doesn't have landowner permission, I kind of think that, you know, he won't be able to do anything because yeah. you need permission of yeah. the landowner to file. I think it's pure and simple. Well, you have to notify him at this point. Well, we can't. We can't presume agriculture or anything else until he tells us that. Well, we aren't in enforcement of a trespass situation. Yeah. That's up to yeah. the owner. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's nothing and to do with us. But we can. <laughs> yeah, we can. You know, issue uh, what is for mm -hmm. enforcement order. Oh, yes. So. And I would need to copy it to Mass Audubon too, since, since I am relatively confident that they're the property owner where this activity was. Is this part of the land that they recently acquired? Um, I think so. I can find that out, but I think this was part of the part of that Oak Trust or whatever it was. Or or th what, what was he had a couple of names before it got consolidated under the Oak Trust thing. It was Three Farm Roads and Patmos Road Trust. I mean, there was there was three different trusts that he had been involved with. With um, at the end of Stack Yard, yep. Chandler, Chandler, yeah. Yeah. Chandler, Chandler Senior, Happy, um, Happy Chandler. Who holds the enforce the conservation restriction on that? We, we co well, I was going to say co-hold, co -hold, but we try with hold Green it with DCR Greenbelt and and the town of Rowley well, hold copy, the conservation restriction. Let's copy all those people too. Haven't been already mentioned. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? Well, I'll need to check and find out if this particular parcel is covered by that CR. There were a couple of parcels that Audubon couldn't get clear title to initially that they did not include in the CR. Remember that, yes. so, so I'll have to verify that this parcel is in fact covered by the CR. But yeah. So anyway, I would request um, that you're, you've already given me a direction. I would request a, a vote to issue and, and confirm. Well, should we confirm it? Just issue. Issue it. Just issue. Let's just issue it and leave it up to him to approach us if there actually is regulatory support for his actions. We hear a motion. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. I apologize by asking you to sign one that hasn't been filled out, but if you could sign this so much on the
what T told us, so therefore <laughs> people might not have mentioned it. <laughs> they might not have mentioned it. Well, I think after, you know, if they were dug as mosquito control, no. But I think the, the WPA built, before. Did, did a lot of ditching, but there was also, I understand, illegal activity. Um, I, I have no <laughs> doubt about that. Part of our checkered past. No, yeah, it makes sense. You know, the coast. Yeah. Under cover of night, they certainly yeah. did it. Nobody's Gloucester. around. Yep, yeah. certainly did. Just adds to the local flavor. Oh, sure. Look how it So, how do these people get out of here? I just had thought they were further yeah. back, these two homes. Well, they are. They're very far back from Weathersfield Street. Yeah, okay. yeah there's well, a long, there must be way long up. sinuous driveway yeah. that goes to yeah, that's the only where road those road two road. residences yeah. had yeah. been. And of course, yeah, and Mr. Patrick and that drive Bar the bought the Trudeau's the property that are, uh, were next to him and always had complained about his commercial development. Absence? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything else for the commission. Um, I have Just a the evaluation. It's a good thing. <laughs> That raises a question I've had a couple of times in my mind um, with regard to your performance evaluation. Plan. Have the selectmen indicated that they or the town administrator are going to be doing one for you because because you do projects under their jurisdiction? And it seems to me that it would be appropriate that that be done. They sent Doug and and the commission and myself uh, a very nice letter in regards to. Okay, well, I haven't seen that. Um, so, in effect, they've given you feedback on that. Um, you got another assignment last night, by the way. I don't know. I what, heard. I don't know whether Debbie's gotten in touch with it. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, um, I guess I don't have anything else. Everybody? Nope. Hear a motion to adjourn? No so move. Second? Second. Approved? Aye. 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 Negatives? Aye. None. We are adjourned. <laughs>